Hi, my name is Kodiak the Kodiak, and today we're going to be doing a tutorial series, a very basic from the ground up tutorial series for beginner players. I'm going to be teaching you some really fundamental things about the UI, how the content manager works, and about how to properly structure the beginning of your city so that way you can change it and expand it to meet your needs on any map. And I think this will be really useful and helpful being that we're going to be having the plazas and promenades DLC coming out soon and the game's going to be on sale. And we're going to have a lot of new people coming into the City Skylines community. And I think that a tutorial series that is starting right now from the ground up, going over all the vanilla aspects of the game and then adapting for when the DLC actually drops will be really helpful for new players. So the first thing that we're going to go over is the main menu. Uh, a lot of it completely irrelevant to you. Newsfeed, ignore it. Paradox account, log in, you get some free stuff. That's about it. You get a Paradox Plaza, which is a nice little park. Your Steam Workshop, yours will look different. I have a no workshop toggle, so that way I can't, uh, I don't use my Steam Workshop mods because we want to play completely vanilla with no DLC currently active, and we'll add DLC to it as we play along this series. And, and that's really important because I wanna make sure that console players can also benefit from this tutorial series. Over here, you can also see all the DLC. You'll have continue game if you've made a game, new game, same old, same old. Editors, don't touch. Just don't touch it. Uh, you're a new player. You can figure out what editors does later. It's basically just a way for you to make new assets and maps. Not really a worry for you right now. Content manager, now this has some important things in it. Maps you can ignore unless you're using a new map or a DLC map or a um, workshop map. Those are the only times you really need to ever be in here. Save games, we'll just show you other save games. You can toggle them on and off. Look how many assets you have and toggle them on and off. Honestly, kind of irrelevant for you. Assets are where you will download trees and buildings and things like that that you can have custom access from the workshop that will come into the game. Again, not relevant. Color corrections, again, not relevant. Mods, this stuff is relevant. So I, I do actually have a single mod active currently and it's a crowd control integration mod which is an application that i use on my twitch streams for my chat to send me disasters uh with the natural disasters dlc it's not from the steam workshop therefore i could not disable it without deleting it so uh, i just have it turned off and that's totally fine if you turn a mod off it's not really relevant unless you have a save where you save with a mod sometimes you can corrupt the save if you don't load back into the game with all those mods active so just be mindful of that hard mode make sure that's off not what you want for your first city Unlimited money. You can play with this on if you'd like to, if it really makes you feel comfortable, feel free to. I'm not here to gatekeep you. I do believe though that it will be a more beneficial learning experience for you if you are uh, restricted by money because it will really help you understand how to properly build the city and learn the core aspects of the game and how to manipulate things to meet your needs. Unlimited ore and oil, I always like to leave on because it does feel a little draining building out these nice oil and ore uh, industry areas, especially with the industries DLC, and then having them kind of ripped away from you at uh, it, from a certain point of view. I always like to play with this on. Unlimited soil I used to play with on, but with the airports DLC, there was a free update that came with it that allowed you to purchase and sell soil. So we're going to play with that off because we have ways to uh, get the soil now. And unlock all, again, you can feel free to play with this on, but again, I'm gonna suggest that you play with it off because then you're gonna miss out on your milestones. And that's kind of the goals for these tutorials that we're gonna be going through. You can also sort by name and a bunch of different options, author, whether or not they're enabled, last modified or file path. I'm gonna click on enabled. And now you can notice that only unlimited ore and oil is enabled. You can also sort by ascending and descending. You can select all of them or deselect all of them. That will not enable them though. You need to use enable all or disable all to do that. Camera scripts, you can ignore. Styles, if you have European and vanilla, you can turn it on. We'll probably use it throughout this tutorial. So I suggest keeping it on. Map themes, completely irrelevant. And scenarios, if you don't have either natural disasters, mass transit or green cities DLCs, these are relevant to you as well. And that's pretty much it from the content manager. That can be a little bit of an intimidating tab. So I really wanted to make sure to highlight that. Under options, when you look at our options, this will be entirely dependent on your FPS. And if you struggle with FPS in your game, I will put some links below that will maybe help you with that. Uh, specifically, if you're on PC, if you're on console, um, I really don't have much help for you. It's kind of just the limitations of your system in the game. Under gameplay, if you like edge scrolling where your cursor goes to the edge, you can turn that on and off. Uh, the really important things here are making sure that pause game after loading is enabled. 
Show in-game guide pop-ups. If you're really a new player, I would suggest enabling these and reading all the pop-ups in the game as they occur, because it'll help give you more reinforced details of what each thing does and how the game wants you to learn it. Auto save every, and then you can set this to be whatever number you want. Just know that your game will kind of pause and stutter every time it does it. I like to set it at 15, sometimes even 10 if my save is getting a little wild. So um, feel free to put that at whatever you want, but make sure that it is on. You can use day night cycle if you like. I personally don't really like the night cycle. Um, and for the purpose of this video, it's a little hard to see sometimes at night. So we're gonna leave that off. Mouse light, mouse light intensity is only relevant during the day night cycle. Dynamic weather if you want rain things of that nature. Disable fire spreading. We kind of want fire spreading on. It's part of the game, so I'm going to leave it on. You can turn it off though. Display road names. Leave that on because we're going to use, I'm going to explain that later in the tutorial. Um, and then basically you can just leave the other two off for now. Key mapping just is your key binds. Audio just allows you to change your audio settings. And if you are a Twitch streamer, make sure you leave gold FM off because uh, this music is uh, copywritten. Same with YouTube's videos or anything of that nature. And then miscellaneous uh, is a tab you should never have to click in, so don't do it. So now I think we're ready to click in and start our new game. But before we do that, we're gonna be opened up with this tab and it's gonna be full of different maps and then information on this side. So uh, you can sort your maps by clicking on theme or buildable area. You can also choose scenarios, but again, we're not dealing with those. You can sort them the same way then. So we're gonna sort by buildable area. And if you look in the bottom right over here, you'll notice that the resources tab has an option for suitable buildable area. And you'll notice that Grand River has the most buildable area at 84%. And that means that is land that isn't water or mountainous. And over here in Cliffside Bay, it has the least at 53%. And those are just the vanilla maps. So these other DLC maps might have different amounts, but you won't get to learn any information about them unless you buy the DLCs or you can look on the wiki. You'll notice that if we click on River Run here, we can look at our natural resources. We have oil, and it tells you a bar of how much that is in the map compared to other maps. Or farming, forestry, which you can actually increase and decrease yourself by manually planting trees. It can be a little tedious, but definitely worth it if you want to build a farming industry in a, or a forest industry in a specific area. And then also the amount of water on the map, which can obviously be relevant. Over here, you can see your outside connection. So this is the highway connection your train connection, your ship connection, and your plane connection. And all that means is you can connect to outside cargo or transportation options using all of these methods. Suitable area of your building, 76%. Your base theme is the theme of each map. So for example, Grand River has a European theme and you'll notice it's a bit brighter, more yellow than the generic temperate map, which is what we'll see here on Two Rivers which is just kind of a generic color preset. Then we have Boreal theme, which is a bit bluer, a bit darker than conventional themes, fits Boreal pretty well. And then if we look here at Diamond Coast, we'll notice it's a tropical theme and it's much warmer. If we also look up here in Grand River, you'll notice that Grand River does not have any oil resources. So that's something really important to pay mind to, as well as Two Rivers doesn't have a ship connection. So make sure you look at those when you're picking your first map. You can also pick a custom map theme, but that's not relevant to us because we don't have any custom map themes. We are going to build our first city here on Blackwoods. It has every resource and it has every outside connection. It has a 69% buildable area. You can also select left hand traffic, name your city right here. You can also do this in game and don't worry about it. And obviously it's showing us the entire time a little preview of the map. Now, if we go to Two Rivers, you'll notice in Two Rivers, you can see this yellow shaded ground. And this is going to be important later in the tutorial where you're going to be able to determine different ground resources. So this is going to be farming land. I can tell just by the color of it. And land that has oil and ore under it will also have different shading to it. And that's going to be really important for us to plan out our cities right when we spawn in. We're going to be looking around immediately to figure out, okay, how are we going to plan to build our city? And we want to make sure that we're paying attention to things like farmland for when we want to build farming industries. Because diversification of our industry will be helpful to us in the long run for creating a really sustainable city that doesn't have to rely on outside resources. So we're going to start with Blackwoods and we're going to hit start. 
Sometimes City Skylines takes a little bit to lo uh, load in, especially when you have a lot of mods and assets. All right, when you load in the game, you should be paused and you get a little pop-up. And this is what you should see. If you notice the UI here, there's gonna be a bunch of different options on here. The only things I'm gonna really explain to you are Chirper, which will kind of give you key points, pop-ups about your city. Like if citizens want specific things, they'll tell you up here in the Chirper. A lot of times this is just kind of general garbage, but you can customize the Chirper up in here. I have him with his birthday hat on. Up over here, you have uh, just some heat maps, and these could be really important for a number of reasons, but we'll go into that later because we don't have any unlocked. Up over here is music. If you want the music on, you can toggle it on and off. I have the music volume just turned off, so I can't even hear anything anyways. And if you're a Twitch streamer or just plan on streaming on YouTube, anywhere really, don't play Gold FM. It does have copyrighted music. Over here is just your escape menu, so if your escape key doesn't work, you can just toggle it there. Down over here is your free cam. You want to take pretty shots. If you hold down the middle mouse button, it will um, hide your mouse, and you can also have free control of the camera at that point. So that's how you can hide your mouse. I hit escape to move out of that. If you want to move your camera around, it's W, A, S, and D, Q, and E, rotate, and R, and F, pan up and down. You can also use the middle mouse wheel, and that does the Q, E, R, and F. So you can use WASDA, and then the R, and F. In the bottom left over here, we have the tile tab. This will just kind of, when you have tiles to unlock, this will become relevant. So we're just going to ignore that for now. Over here is your milestones. Can't see that yet. So that's okay. We'll go back to it. You have your roads tab, pause, accelerate time. You can play pause by hitting space bar. One, two, and three to change speed. Your information tab. This will just give you some information about your city. I literally never clicked on this a day in my life until prepping for this tutorial so <laughs> but i do click on it sometimes to name the city so and we're gonna leave that name empty put some suggestions in the comments oh no uh if you hit escape it won't save it you have to hit enter to, for it to take so this is your residential in uh commercial and industrial and office uh rcio meter just tells you the demands of different things industrial and commercial or uh i'm sorry industrial and offices uh take up the same tab because they kind of do the same job the only difference is that industrial will produce uh goods and a bit more traffic so keep that in mind commercial and then residential and this is just demands for what your city town wants so right now we're in a demand for residential because that's the first thing you kind of need over here our bank balance and then your weekly income will be red if it's negative and green if it's positive your population your weekly change in population, so this will go up and down, and your global happiness. That's pretty much it for the UI. That That's pretty much everything you, you need to know, really, for right now. So the first thing that the game makes you do is it makes you build a road before it allows you to unlock anything. So we're just going to do that really quickly. All you're going to want to do is find one of these guidelines, and I'll explain all this stuff in a minute, but find one of these guidelines and build it out until it hits 40. Notice how it says construction costs 40 there. And notice how we've unlocked quite a few new things on our, our menu. We've also lost 40. When we go to delete it, we'll only get 30 back. You don't get a full refund when you destroy roads, but you get a partial. You get less if you're playing on hard mode, just so you know. So in the road menu, you notice these little guidelines. If we go over here to the toggle snapping, you can turn those on or off. That just helps you kind of align things and make perfect grids, which is really nice. You also have the grid options, which um, is going to be useful. If you want to make paths, the grid option is really nice, but that just helps align with the grid. You have road length, which you can kind of see here. Notice how it's very free and flow. Whereas if we do this, it kind of goes in chunks. And then there's angle. So notice how I can move it left and right, and it doesn't really lock on anything except for the road guidelines. Turn the road guidelines off. Notice how they don't show up. Road length, you don't have that bar that shows up. Notice how there's a bar that shows up. That's gone. That's every 10 units a bar will appear. And the grid's not really relevant here. But if we turn angle back on, notice how it snaps every 90 degrees now. And then we turn it all back on, and we have them all back on. So that's how that works. You can select, and it will drag out, and it'll make that noise. It might be annoying to some. And if you right-click, it'll toggle it off. And if you left-click, it'll build it. 
we're going to start building with dirt roads on any road that's going to be a two-lane road because it'll help us save money. And we're going to build with one-way roads on anywhere. We, we think there will be a one-way or a highway because all highways are one-way. Uh, we're going to have this road be an imaginary highway because we don't have highway roads unlocked yet, which are under this tab. So you have small roads, medium roads, which are going to be four-lane roads. They look like this. They're going to be much bigger. You're going to have large roads, highways, pre-made intersections, and tolls. And if you look, there's this big circle around our road. That's going to be where the zoning is going to be when we place the road down. And I'll show you that in a minute. Um, the zoning only goes four off the road, which is important to note. And you can build buildings. Uh, some buildings are going to be bigger than four units back. So you're going to have to plan for that in the future. Like the garbage dump, it's going to be larger than four. I think that one's eight. So if you're building a perfect grid, that'll just slot right in perfectly. So just keep that in mind. So we're going to build this road down about, that's going to be 10. Next line's 20, 30. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. We're going to be building this city, uh, what I call the Imperial Jedi method. This is what he does in his tutorial videos. And it is a pretty good starting build. And it's something that you can kind of do in most of the maps in the game. So I think it's a really good idea to start with. So we're going to steal that from him and his tutorial series. If you want to watch his tutorial series too, if anything I'm saying is confusing, uh, you can, you know, put a clarification in the comments and I'll clarify that in a later video and in the comments. However, you can also watch his series because he has some pretty good ones, but his vanilla series is a little bit outdated. The last one was in 2020 before Sunset Harbor was released and we've had Sunset Harbor in airports and we'll now have the new DLC plazas and promenades coming out, which is kind of my whole point for making this series. We're going to have a large influx of new people playing the game and it's going to be on sale. So they're going to have new people picking it up. And there's just always people who get confused when playing this game. It, there's a lot of little aspects to it. And I wanted to make sure that this series will help bring them into the community because I think it's a great game and it's a wonderful little community that exists for it. So we're going to move to the right here and we're going to go out 20 units with our one-way roads. Now, when you build one-way roads, they build from the direction that you're building. So notice how I built this one moving this direction. So the one-way road is this way. However, we'll break this. Imagine I had built it this way. Notice how they arrows the wrong direction now. You get these little things, the little pop-ups. It tells you there's nowhere for cars to go at the end of this. It's the, they're butting up. There's nowhere for cars to go. What you can do is grab the road upgrade tool. And it doesn't matter which road you have selected either. Like I'll grab a, a, a large one. Now, if I were to left click, it would upgrade this road. I'll do that as an example to that road type. And if I right click one of these one way roads and it only works on one way roads, it'll change the direction. And as I said, it doesn't matter which one you have. So we're going to re convert that one back to that. The really important thing to notice in city skylines is lane mathematics. And that is something that uh, you will hear other content creators like Biffa, for example, talk about quite a bit. And when you look at a highway here, notice how it's three lanes here. You can kind of see it. It's a little far away. The camera blocks our view. We can't really get over there. But if we notice, there's three lanes here and it goes down into two. That can create gridlock. However, something important to note here is that this starts as three lanes. There's a lane that shoots off. So in theory, this highway should lose a lane if you really want to create good traffic flow, because that makes this outer lane an exit only, and all traffic will be condensed into these two lanes. And then as a new road comes on, you open up a new lane to that. And then eventually down the road, you could downsize that if you really want to. So even though this is three lanes, there's only two lanes really connecting up here. So our lane mathematics, one plus one, doesn't equal three. So this is in theory, just a two lane road, uh, or at least two lanes worth of traffic will really ever only be on here at a time. So this is fine that this is a two lane one way, but we don't have access to highways yet, which is why we're using just regular two lane one way roads. We'll never zone on these either because eventually we'll upgrade these to highway. So we're going to grab our dirt road and we're going to create a 20 unit off like that. So remember, that's two guidelines worth, right? So we have one line, two line. Pretty easy. We're then going to grab our one-way road, and we're going to draw it 
at a 45 degree angle. And eventually you'll hit a point where these two things meet up. These little dots are called nodes and you'll see them on roads. That's where traffic will merge. And when you upgrade roads, so if we were to upgrade, you can notice here that it'll only upgrade to the next node. So that's really important to note. And you can kind of fudge the nodes based on where you want to build these. So if we were to build a road out this way, just like how we did, it would put a node right in the center. However, if we were to build it like this and then out, notice how it changed where the node positions are. So you can kind of make adjustments just like that. We'll delete that road because we don't need it. So we're going to grab our one way road, put it on this angle, find that point and build that out. And now we're gonna build this up about 10, just like this. It's gonna be a one way. So it lines up with this and now it'll be the same straight angle as this road is. And then we're gonna build another angle. That's gonna be 10 this way. Now we can delete this road. We're gonna build this up another 30. And I should have built that as a dirt road because we actually don't need that to be a one way at that point, but that's okay. We're going to grab this road and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to build it out 30. We're going to make it sure it's dirt, save money. There we go. Actually, I do this wrong. This needs to be a one way here and here. It needs to be 20 this direction of one ways. So we'll extend that out another 10. We'll extend that out another 10. And the reason we did that is because we're gonna make a box. Okay, we're gonna notice where they meet, create a perfect 90 degree angle and connect that up right here. Now, if you notice all these blocks on the side, that's where we can zone. And if we go into our zoning tab right here, you can zone all of these squares to be different types of residential areas, commercial areas, industrial areas, or offices eventually as well. We don't want to zone at all on these one ways because there's no way for you to get here without coming out of the highway. And there's no way to get onto the highway without going all the way out and about and then you gotta go around this four leaf clover and then you gotta do a U-turn and you gotta come back. So we're just not gonna even zone this section. It would be a, a waste of um, efficiency and traffic flow. So we're not even gonna, we're not even gonna worry about that. However, we are going to do zoning over here and we're going to do a grid. Now, grids are really good at maximizing space, and that's really important, especially in the early game. Um, the reason grid cities exist in real life is because it's really easy to build uh, quickly, very uniform. There's a lot of benefits to grids. A lot of people hate grid cities, but um, there is a lot of benefits to them. And you notice that we're kind of building up the train and that'll lead to some, a little bit of a wonky look to it, but that's okay. If you're playing with mods, you could really fix this. Or if you had unlimited soil and everything unlocked and you already had landscaping, you can maybe flatten this whole area out if you wanted to, but we're going to play with its vanilla. So we're just going to build this grid out and this is going to end up being our residential area. So we're going to want to mimic this on the other side. However, we're gonna do go about it a different way. So we're gonna go up 30 from here. We're gonna grab that point and we'll upgrade from this one. Right click, we change directions. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna grab our road here and we're gonna build a bridge over the highway. And in order to do that, you hit page up and page down. I don't know what the key minds are on console, but I'm sure you might have a pop-up for it. So over here, something I didn't take note of was these options down over here outside of the upgrade tool. So we have the curved road tool. The curved road tool will build perfect 90 degree angles. So even though this road is mostly straight, it's not like a square. Like we're not trying to make a square here. That would be like a square right here. Perfect curve. This is how you build roundabouts it will still build a perfect 90 degree angle into this intersection, which is really good. 
You can also use the freeform road tool, which won't create a perfect angle into that. You see how that's different? And again, if you don't want to build it, you just right click and it'll deselect everything that you've done. Those are those options. And this is the elevation step. And this just changes how much elevation it'll take. So all I want is it to go up enough for it to give us this slope. Now this will be a pretty tall road. This would be a very unrealistic bridge height. However, I don't really want to fiddle around with like making this slope look nice because I want this city to look nice, but I also don't want to take a bunch of time to do that in the beginning parts of this tutorial because it's your first city. There's going to be things to improve and you're going to want to upgrade and make everything look pretty eventually, but you need to play how to learn how to play the game first. And so we're going to do some things at the cost of beauty for the sake of efficiency. And eventually, once plazas and promenades come out, I want to do a modded tutorial series. And in that one, we're going to have a bunch of beautification mods that will really help us make our city look nice. So for this one, it's more about making functionality work alongside beauty in the base game. So that's important. So something to take note of is that we built this, but we don't know how long this was to get to here. And we've built this bridge, and we don't know the distance here. Now we could do exactly what we did over here, but I don't want to do that. I want to show you guys another way on how to check this. So the other way you can do that is by checking the edge of the bridge right here and dragging it down to the road again. And notice how the construction cost is 1600. So we know that if we go down to ground level and drag this out 1600, that's going to be the same distance because it costs the same. So now we have our bridge and it's symmetrical and it's the same length. And so now we know that this section right here was 20. So we can bring this down 20 and then we can turn on our one way tool. And we know this was about 20. So we can bring this down another 20 and then we can connect that up with the highway. And so now we have this side already done. And you might think, well, this doesn't seem that important. Like you could just build the grid out this way. Learning how to build in different directions will really help your efficiency and like help your brain really think about how you want to expand and build out other areas. It's really important that when you first start a game, you kind of have a mental thought process of where and how you want to build things. So for example, remember if when we were in the, the main menu and I talked about, oh, there was a farming area. Well, I know that there's farming right here. And I saw that when we booted into the map. So I knew that I wanted to turn this into the industrial side of town because we can put farming industry in here because there's a bunch of good fertile soil here. And over here, there's trees. So we could do lumber. We could do lumber over here and things of that nature. But we know we have to start with residential, commercial, and industrial. And I know this is the first industrial that I want to build out because this, this farmland can't be moved. However, we could place a bunch of trees down the road on this manually all the way through here and build our lumber industry kind of wherever we want. So that's really important to keep in mind. So we're going to build out 20 units from there to there. And notice how I found that I went two nodes over because the game already assumed that I wanted 10. You could also have just done it backwards and flipped the direction using the upgrade tool. And we're going to build our cube just like we did on the other side. <clears throat> and remember, we're not going to be zoning on this road at all because there's no way to get in and out of the city. You'd have to go down to the foreland. You know, it's just it's, it's a big mess. So we're not even going to worry about that. So we're going to go down this way. I'm going to do another 20. You can make these grids any size you want. I like going 20. So we're going to go with 20. 20 size grid there. I'm going to go up like this and build another grid. And that's where I'm gonna leave that side for now. So we have this highway, it's uncompleted. What are we gonna do? Well, I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna build a roundabout. And I'm gonna figure out where I wanna build that roundabout. I think I wanna build that roundabout somewhere right about here. So we're gonna drag that down about 40 units. 
Flip the direction on this side. Now, that doesn't cost any money to flip the direction. It also doesn't cost any money to upgrade to roads that cost the same. So because the two lane, lane one way road and the two lane road cost exactly the same, they're the same upkeep per week. When you hover over that, it comes up with a bunch of different information, tells you how fast the cars can drive on it also. Notice how they drive slower on the two lane gravel road. That's the downside, but it's cheaper. With all that information in mind, we know that we can upgrade or just hot swap these roads as we want. So we could just build the pre-made roundabout, but I don't really want to do that because I want to show you guys how to make roundabouts because roundabouts are going to be your friend in this game. So we're going to drag this down and we're going to go till about, let's see, 10, 20, 30, 40, right? 50. We're gonna go to about 55. So it's right when that second line shows up, you're at the five marker. So we're gonna go down to 55. And we're gonna do the same thing on this side. We're gonna go down to 55. Perfect. And we're gonna bring that in. Just like that. We're gonna find the middle marker. And we're gonna go up 10 units. And we're gonna build a plus sign. This is going to be a big roundabout. It's going to be a bit bigger, but it's going to be useful for teaching you how roundabouts, how to build roundabouts and how they work. So now that we have a 10 units in both direction, right? It's 200, it's 200. That's how we know that's 10 because it's 20 per cell and 10 times 20 is 200. We have the basis for our roundabout. So we're going to take our right angle tool. We're going to go up 10, over 10. Notice how it costs 320. And we're going to start we're gonna do the same thing over here. Boom. We're gonna do it again. Boom. We're gonna do it again. Boom. And now we have a perfect circle. And you're gonna wanna keep these roads in the middle. Don't destroy them. That'll help brace the roundabout because sometimes the game doesn't really understand what you're doing. So make sure you keep those in there. We're gonna delete one road back because I overbuilt, but that's okay. We're gonna find the middle node. Notice how there's a middle node right here. We're gonna build it at about Let's do a 39 degree angle. No, let's do a 33 degree angle. And I'm kind of just guesstimating here. There's really no way to do this in the vanilla game that's not a little wonky. And we're gonna free, free, uh, free do this. We're gonna do this freehand. So we're gonna turn off all of our snap tubes, okay? And we're gonna drag this to about right here because we want it to curve out this way and then we want it to curve up into the road. And you'll see what I mean once I do this. I'm gonna do it till about right there. Notice how it changes in value in steps of 10. So it goes from 320 to 360 right here. We're gonna go till it hits about 360 and it's arching a little bit towards that road. And then we're gonna turn angle back on. We're and our road guideline. And connect that back up at a right angle. And now you can free flow off the highway. And we're going to mimic that on this side of the road. So we're going to grab this one. We're going to do the same thing. Turn the angle back on. Turn the road guidelines back on. Connect that back up. And there we go. Now, it's not going to be the most precise, but that's going to help your traffic flow the smoothest. Anytime that they can do an arching turn rather than a 90 degree or a sharp turn, it's going to be better for it. We're going to upgrade this to a one-way road. Eventually, we'll upgrade this probably to a three-lane road, but we don't have those unlocked yet. And then we're going to delete our bracer roads. And remember, if the roads are backwards, just right-click on them and it'll flip it around. So here we go. There is our roundabout. And we could bring we could have bring, brought this in a little bit more, but this is just a good baseline tutorial roundabout on how to do that. That's how I do it, at least. Other people might do it differently, but this is how I do it. I like the 10 size roundabouts because it puts nodes in between the intersections. So eventually we'll probably put an intersection down here, right? Let's turn all of that back on, put it down 10. And notice how there's a node there. So that gives traffic the ability to swap lanes. And that's really important. And that's why I like this, the 10 size. 
And if you ever want to do your work to your roundabout, make sure you put the bracer roads in. So we have a roundabout at the end, so that way traffic that comes down and through, they can turn around, or when we build down here, they can get off. There's not really too much we can do about the on-offs here. We could do exactly what we did here, over here, but I don't want to do that. There's not going to be that much traffic coming through here. We are on a peninsula, so this will be fine for now. Next thing we're going to want to look at is our power, and notice how we turned on City Skylines light mode with the power. This is just an info map, and you can pop these up how you want to in the top left by selecting. However, we want the electric one, which automatically pops up whenever you open whatever you're looking at. So for example, if I'm looking at the water pumping station, it will automatically pump up the water. However, if I don't really care to look at this and I'm like, for whatever reason, I want to look at the electric power map while I have this open, we can just go in here and turn it on and it'll still work. However, we want power and we want wind power. Wind power is going to be our best friend at the beginning part. Coal power plants are really expensive. We could totally place one if we wanted to, um, but not necessary. So we're going to place a wind power plant and we're going to place this wind power plant over on this side. And the reason we're going to place it over on this side is because when we look at our water, we notice that there's not a lot of water moving over here and we have to dump our sewage somewhere. And in the base game, we're only left with the water drain pipe and that just pumps sewage out. And so we want to put that on a water source that's going to push it away from our water collection. Now we can use water towers, which will be inland to collect water, or we can use water pumping station. So we're going to end up putting the water pumping station here. Now, if you look at the orange bubble around, that's just noise pollution. Noise pollution can make your citizens sick. So try to avoid putting that near residential areas. We're going to put it right here at the end of this gulf. Notice how there's no water flow over here. So it's really important that we make sure the sewage thing is pumping all of the sewage water away from this because any kind of sewage that gets dumped anywhere near this will come into this because there's no water directionality. So you always wanna make sure that your sewage outflow is downstream from your intake. So we're gonna put this right here. Then we're gonna look at our wind power and you can notice that it also has sound its construction cost, and then estimated production. So that's an um, estimated amount of power it's gonna produce in a given area. So right here, it's eight megawatts. That's the maximum. And over here, it'll only produce three. And you can tell that by the heat map because this is where wind is on this map. And every map's different. It's just based on terrain. So we're gonna put this right here. Perfect. And what that does is you can see this little blue bubble around it, and that's your power grid. So as long as the blue bubble is connected to your power producer, then that is connected. And you can connect these little blue bubbles using the power lines. So for example, this guy is really far away. So we need to connect him up with the power grid. So we're gonna place these power lines and they come in little nodes, just like that. You can raise them and lower them just like you can with roads using page up and page down. Bring that to here, cross the highway, and bring that down to our power plant. Now, all of these things, everything we've built, roads, wind turbine, sewage, they all cost upkeep. And that's gonna start ticking up in our weekly income. So, in order to make money, we have to start zoning. But before we do that, we have to place water because the places that we zone need water access. I like to build mine under the roads because that's realistic to real life. That's how water pipelines in real life are built. And you can be as efficient with these as you want to. In Natural Disasters, which is how I play a lot on my Twitch stream, you guys can follow below in the links panel. I like to play with natural disasters. My Twitch chat can send me disasters. So it's really important that I make these redundancies because they can knock out my water grid really easily by sending me a meteor and destroying this part of the grid. So if you plan on playing with natural disasters, it's really important you do that. Otherwise, you really don't have to if you don't care about the realism aspect of the game, which you don't have to. This game can customize and fit however you want to build it. You want to build a highly efficient city? Go for it. Super detailed? Go for it. The, the world is quite literally your oyster, all right? So, I'm gonna build this up over here, down over here, and 
The way upkeep works in this game is it's based per cell. And what does that mean? Well, cells, remember how I said that this is two units, you place the two unit road and then destroy it? Each unit is a cell when building one of these. So for every cell, so if this is 10 cells, that will cost 19 cents per week per cell. So multiply that times 10, it's $1.90 per week per every 10 dirt road. And then, then that's different. You know, it's just math. It's just math. You don't have to do any of that in your head though. Don't worry about it. So now that we have our water grid set up, the next thing we have to do is start zoning. The only thing our city wants is residential. So let's build some residential. Now I'm gonna build residential on the corner here. And it's really important that you're smart in in this. Don't just start building residential areas. That's a bad mistake. I see a lot of people who play this game a lot. They do that because they know what they're doing. New players, don't do that. Build one four by four squares. So the largest a single building will grow into. There's two different types of buildings. There's ploppables and growables. Growables are the buildings that you zone like this, and this, they will grow up in buildings. Ploppables are buildings like this, where you actually manually have to place them. The growables, the maximum size will be four by four, which is why we build in these grids just like this. Because each road kind of takes up one, it's actually two, but when we're building, it looks like one. And then on the inside, we have eight. So that means you can build buildings back to back like this. So we're gonna build one, it'll build one building here, and then it'll create a power grid. And it's really, 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 really important that we make sure the power grid gets caught up, especially if you don't have a lot of money to start, because you're gonna start losing money really rapidly here, and you wanna make sure that that power grid's connected. So we're gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna build a power line. Notice how close I built that to the road, because the power grid will kind of overlap over the road here just from this one house. Notice how the power grid kind of plopped down here. That one house will pop up its own power grid, and every kind of growable or ploppable will have one. And that'll connect up just like that. If we build it that close to the road next to this thing, it'll connect. And then that'll be the power grid for over on this side. And we're gonna wanna do the same thing right here. So build it really close to the road. I'm gonna build it three units over. I'm gonna pull it down to that. And we're gonna build one industrial. Really good idea to keep your industrial away because industrial produces a lot of noise and actual pollution. So noise pollution and regular pollution. And so you don't want these next to your residential because it'll make your citizens sick. You don't want that. So residential's on this side. This is on this side. Water's all hooked up. Power's all hooked up. Forgot to hook up sewage. Let's connect that up. Forgot about that. That was a close one. And the next thing we're gonna do is go over to the economy tab. And you'll have taxes, budget, and loans. Taxes will be really important, but we're not gonna worry about that right now. You can also get into like finer details down here. Again, not gonna worry about any of that unless we run into trouble. The first thing we're gonna do, pull our water down. We're not gonna use that much water. So by reducing the budget for our water, we save money and these little bars are gonna go up really high because we're gonna have green availability. And we'll have that green availability for quite a while, even at 50% budget. So that will save us money in the long run, much like how we're saving money by having dirt roads for now. The other thing we can do is lower our electricity. Let's start with 80. This will show you guys a little pop-up in a little bit that'll be educational for you and it'll help us save money in the beginning. So we can hit play now and we're gonna start losing money, but don't fear, everything will be fine. And before we do that, I'm actually gonna do one more thing. Now, notice how we built this bridge. I want this bridge to be a four lane road, just like this. So we're gonna upgrade all of them. Now, there's something really important to notice about this. Four lane roads have different, are a different road size. Now notice, because of where we spaced these two lane roads, there's eight in the middle. And now notice where we placed this road because I stupidly forgot that these are slightly bigger. We actually only have seven, but that's gonna be okay. This is a learning experience and sometimes cities, cities really aren't perfect in their zoning. Even in their grids, they're not perfect. So this is fine. We're gonna leave it just like this. I'm gonna destroy that because we don't need that road. We wasted a little bit of money there to show that as an example, but that's okay. Um, this automatically creates a traffic light as well. 
because intersections on two lane roads will not create traffic lights. And there's actually not even really a yield. Everyone just has direct flow. Um, cars like to drive through one another. It's a great time. However, when you connect up to a medium sized road or a four lane road, it'll automatically create a traffic light at that junction because this should be higher traffic. Therefore, maybe a traffic light is needed. If you want to turn traffic lights on and off, which I do right now, we're going to toggle it by going into our info views down here in the traffic routes. Routes, if you click on a road, it'll show you all the traffic that's going through. We'll look at this later. Um, junctions will allow you to see where there's traffic lights. So for example, there's traffic light down here. You can toggle that on and off. When it's off, you can also toggle traffic light or stop sign and show who has priority. We're not going to fiddle with any of that right now. We're just going to let traffic kind of drive how it wants. You can also adjust roads. This is purely for naming purposes and why I wanted you to turn on the name. So notice how this is Clark Bridge and Clark Bridge goes across the whole bridge. You can also click on the name of a road and click this and it'll pop up that same thing. You can click adjust road and it'll also just throw you straight over to this. If you grab this right here, let's say we drag that in. This was the road I selected, so it's going to give you a little node and it won't allow you to drag this outside of it. So we're going to pull this to here in the middle. And then I'm going to hit escape. And notice how we have Clark Bridge here. And we also have Clark Bridge here. It didn't want to rename it. That's OK. Sometimes it doesn't. However, we can rename this to fart. Haha, <laughs> fart. And notice how it only renamed this part of the bridge. And if we wanted to make fart bigger, well, now this most of the bridge is fart. And only this is the Clark Bridge. We want it all to be Clark Bridge. We don't want fart. We have a way for traffic to get from industrial side of the city to the residential and commercial side of the city. We have a way for traffic to get on and off the highway to do a circle on the highway. We have a way set up to an eventually expand later using our grid. We have industrial area, we have our water set up, and we have power, a baseline for it at least. And now that's pretty much it. That's all you need to worry about for right now. We, we adjusted our budget, but this is not essential. I just like to do the same money. And it's the same thing with the dirt roads. We could have done all paved roads too. We would have been maybe cutting it a little close money wise, but that's okay. So now we can just hit play. You'll notice we're gonna start losing money in our weekly income, but we already have a house being built. And you notice, how it has no connection right there. It's connected to the grid and that's good. So now the sewage outflow is powered. The water intake is powered. And you'll notice if we look at our water and we go to the water heat map, which you can do by selecting a water pump or by going up in here and just selecting water like such, you'll notice that there's little arrows pointing towards the water pump because it's starting to create a current sucking into it. That's OK. If you click on a building, it'll tell you some information about it, too, and the upkeep. And you'll notice that it's not operating because it really doesn't have that many buildings that it needs to. And it's already filled all the pipes with water. Uh, the pipes will do both sewage and water intake as well. So now that we have one house built, we can start expanding the whole zone because now it will build off that power grid. It's just the way the game AI works. It wouldn't have done that before, but now it will. So we can expand out that zone. And remember, we don't want to build in this square. Now we could, in theory, and I think we will, just to show you guys, build a little intersection just like that. That'll maximize our grid usage, just like so. And we're not building on these roads still. Make sure that there's water under that, and that'll be the next section. So as that's starting to build, let's give our little fun camera, free camera here. We can kind of see these buildings starting to build up and they build up pretty cool. And eventually once we get enough buildings built up, they'll start building industry because, oh, there's people in this town. People need jobs and their job is the industry. Their job is also commercial as well, but we won't worry about that for now. So there's a slight demand for industry and we'll wait until an industry appears. Any minute, there it is. Notice how it connected up to the grid. We're building an industry building. 
And when we looked at an industry building, it'll tell you how many jobs or workers it wants. It'll also tell you the tier of the building. Uh, residential buildings will have five tiers or levels, whereas industrial, commercial, and offices will only have three. But it'll tell you how many jobs are available, what level of education. Uneducated is uneducated. Educated is elementary school. Well-educated is high school. And highly educated is college. That way you can tell kind of like what kind of jobs and workers that are needed in this building. So you know, oh, I need more educated citizens here. And maybe I should not build um, as high level things as I am. So now we have no demand for residential and we have a demand for commercial. Now a key in, this, is, this applies to real life too. In order to keep cars off the road by building commercial close to residential, it actually encourages walking. And that's what we want. We want to encourage people to not drive because that clogs up the roads. And we don't want to clog up the roads. We want industrial traffic to use the roads, public transit, services. We want those buildings too. So I'm going to put some commercial in here. And in fact, I'm going to dezone this tile and rezone it commercial. And eventually that building will destroy itself and it'll replace it with commercial, just like that. And we're starting to see this surge of traffic and that's the people moving in. So remember, whenever you zone residential, you're going to see a surge of people moving in. They also move in and they're the same age. Even though they say adults, children, young teens, you will get death waves is what it's called in the game. Mostly adults are moving in here. So eventually, all these adults will die at roughly the same time. And that's a problem, obviously, because then you're going to have massive amounts of dead people to take care of at your cemeteries and your crematoriums, and that creates death waves. So you want to make sure that when you're building your zoning and your areas that you have... We're going to build some more industrial wall I'm talking that you have space and time them out properly. So that way you don't get stuck with those death waves because boy, they are annoying. There's mods that can handle that. And we'll discuss that in the mod series later. So here we go. Look at that. Let's build out some more industrial over here. Build it up. Because we have enough people now that they want jobs. We have commercial wants goods. So rather than importing, they would rather have industry that creates the goods that they sell here. That's how the game works. And then citizens want jobs. Notice there's jobs here, but not as many as industry. So you have people making in an industry goods that go to the commercials. They sell them and then people work here and they go and buy and work. And it's, it's a self-sustaining ecosystem. You could actually destroy these roads and they could self-sustain themselves if we properly zoned everything and not have any import or output. Not right now though, because there's lots of services that are needed, but that's okay. So we're gonna zone a bit more of that, a bit more of this, build out some more commercial. And I'm gonna make this not perfectly bored. So before I had been zoning in a way, so that way it would try to build the biggest building. So four by four, however, didn't always do that. And that's the that's the beauty of growables. It will it'll build like a modular city based on how you how you zone things. So I'm gonna purposely not build exactly in four by fours. And you can if you want to. And you can keep knocking buildings down until they build in four by fours how you want. But notice how these are two by twos. And they, they can even build one by ones. They, they usually won't though, if there's space behind it to grow in. The game will automatically try to maximize space. And our goal here, if we hit in the bottom right or bottom left, we click on this little milestone button. Our goal is to hit the little Hamlet milestone and reach a population of 320. And it'll unlock all of this stuff. Medical clinic, landfill site, elementary school. We will now have to provide our citizens with garbage, healthcare, education, loans, taxes, um, all that. And you can hit these arrows and you can see all the things that you'll unlock all the way down until Megalopolis. Uh, it'll also tell you when you can buy new tiles. Tiles are back in this tab when we hit the areas. Each one is a tile and you can buy up to nine tiles, I believe. Maybe they expanded that. I don't know. However, you can check that yourself. Now notice how there's a little electricity thing that appeared right over here. That's because we reduced the cost of our electricity. So even though we placed it in an eight megawatt area, if we go and click on it, it's only producing five and that's because we reduced the budget for it. That's why I wanted to do that. So I can show you guys how this works. So we can increase that to 100. And notice how we have water at half and it's still at full. 
So we increase the electricity now. And now our electricity is back and it's fine. We're making a profit. So we can just let this run, make some money. I'm going to build some residential right here because the game wants it. Town wants it. We'll give it to him. You notice these gray tiles? These gray tiles are letting you know that you will destroy an object that is there if you zone here. So for example, if we zone residential, it will destroy this rock. So we can maybe keep the rock a little safe here by not zoning in there. Notice we got a little one by four residence here. And we'll just let this play out at three times speed. People are moving in. Very good. Let's expand all the way out to here. And we've hit Little Hamlet. And that is also where we're going to end the first episode of the tutorial. I'm hoping to have the second episode up very soon after I upload this one. The rest of them should kind of fly because we're kind of just like going to be building. I'm going to be talking. It's going to be a lot less structured and more uh, free flow. There will be mistakes made and we will go back and we will correct them because learning and practically doing it ourselves is the best way to reinforce these mindsets and the skills that you're going to learn to help build better cities in this game. And so I hope that maybe this baseline and this structure here, it shows everything we unlocked, obviously. And I hope that maybe the things that you learned in just even the beginning part of this tutorial on budgeting and everything uh, will be really helpful. Notice how we have new budget options, we've unlocked loans and taxes. So that way you guys don't go bankrupt because going bankrupt is pretty easy in this game. And it's a struggle I know a lot of people personally have had when um, playing this game for the first time. A lot of the other episodes will hopefully be a bit shorter as well. We'll have like a set goal. We'll try to hit every episode as well. So I think the next goal will just be the next milestone. And that'll be the end of that episode. Before we go, the first thing that I want to say is that you should increase all of these to 12. Taxes. Death and taxes. The two things guaranteed in life. And you know what? You can crank it up to 12 and they won't be mad at you. Don't go to 13 unless they have super high happiness. I wouldn't even ever go. To, I never go to 13. Just go to 12. Immediately, the moment you unlock this, push it to 12. That'll really help your budget. And you can see that go up. And you can see our happiness. It won't go down. Notice how that went up. And now we're making 1,000 per week, which is great. And that'll help us get some a good amount of money going. Because some of these buildings, like the recycling or the um, landfill, the healthcare buildings, which we have two different varieties of. We have the medical clinic and the medical clinic. They're exactly the same. They just look different. So based on how you want to build it. And we have our two elementary schools. One's more European. The other one is a bit more American or modern looking. They functionally do the same thing, though. They, they're pretty expensive. So it's important that we're making money because we want to make sure that we're able to afford all that. And you could obviously start upgrading roads now as well if you don't want to use the gravel roads. I like using the gravel roads for as long as possible just because it's good for cost cutting and they don't really seem to care too much. The roads that are important to upgrade though are these priority main roads. So before we go, I'm gonna upgrade these roads and then I'm gonna wish you guys a great rest of your day. On screen now, I'm gonna put some videos that YouTube's gonna suggest to you. You should click on them, watch them. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys have any comments, questions, concerns, please put them in the comments. I'm eager to learn. I wanna start making City Skylines tutorials, videos, since um, I already kinda do that on TikTok, but uh, they're quite different than this. So I wanna hear what I'm doing wrong, what I could do better. Uh, please let me know. All right, thanks guys. Have a good one.